So hey y'all, welcome to our farm update. We're just trying to keep you up to date with everything that's going on here on the farm. Uh, we're gonna take you on a little tour of what's been going on, some good, some not so good, and uh, maybe introduce you to some new animals that you haven't met yet. But ultimately we just wanna share our progress with you guys and uh, see what's been going on. So just sit back, relax, and then enjoy the tour. Well, how are y'all doing? It's Jason. Welcome back to the farm here at Cattywampus Acres. Got my buddy out here with me. That's Kevin. If you don't know Kevin, meet Kevin. He's our great Pyrenees puppy. And he is, oh, he's getting close to 13 weeks, I think. Oh, actually, maybe he's 13 weeks today. And uh, we've been accused of not showing enough Kevin. And so uh, apparently they want to see less of me and more Kevin. So. Here you go, there's some Kevin for you. He's just uh, scoping stuff out in the back. Um, so Kevin's doing well, um, for those who are wondering. Chickens are doing well. We'll take you over and see the new chicks here in a second. We have them in the workshop. Uh, we had a bunch of chickens in the brooder that we just got. And um, so that's some good news and some happy news. Um, but I guess I needed to share some not as happy news with you. So although I would love for all of our uh, farm goings and comings and goings, whatever you want to call it, to always be happy and always be joyful and always be rainbows and unicorns, uh, that is not always the case. If any of you out there are farmers, homesteaders, you know that sometimes things don't go as planned and it's not as uh, happy of a moment as you want it to be. Uh, we have always, always been honest with you guys and don't try and hide stuff. I know that there's some people on social media and they really just want to you know show only the good things and that's great and i, I appreciate that but ultimately um i think you guys need to know that sometimes not good things happen so uh, i am currently here uh in our little pen where we have the nigerian dwarf goats who are pregnant and the other day uh, keaton and i were gearing up to try and finish a lot of kevin's fencing around the back of the property well, um, I came out here and I came into this area here. Uh, this is our little barn that we have set up. There's a heat lamp in here. We got it nice and set up for these Nigerian dwarfs. Um, we just have their little girls in there with them. And the plan was for them to be giving birth soon. All of them have full udders and we're expecting that to happen very soon, but ultimately uh, you don't know what day it's gonna happen. So I came out here and uh, in this area, I saw something laying here and I could see the end of Tina laying in the barn here. Um, I was pretty concerned because it didn't look like normal. Um, and one thing about goats is they typically don't go by our schedule when they do anything. So I came out here and um, I found that Tina had given birth to two stillborn babies. So that was very, very sad. Um, it's never um, happy, it's never easy, I guess. I guess it's never an easy moment, even though it happens on farms and when you have this many animals, you're bound to lose some and it really stinks. Uh, I sort of checked on Tina. She was just sort of laying there and still looked to be like maybe she was still in labor. Um, we gave it some time, still was everything was there. Ultimately, what happened, we had to take her to the vet for an emergency visit the following day. Um, the good thing is that the Nigerian dwarfs are pretty compact and he didn't have to come out here. We just brought her to him and sure enough, there was another baby inside there. And so uh, that baby was also um, not alive. So unfortunately, we had to um, remove the baby um, just to because otherwise it was certainly going to hurt or kill Tina. We did not want that because she's a precious goat and she's been here with us since the beginning. The vet took very good care of her. We were scared that maybe she might not make it, um, but she ended up making it and I'll show you. There she is and she's with her little girl Gina. For the Gina was her girl from last year. She's still recovering and um, actually what I got to have to do right now and I'm gonna bring y'all with me. Um, I gotta give her one more shot um, to sort of help her out as she goes through the last little bit of this. I am not a veterinarian, um, but when you are a homesteader or farmer, you have to know how to take care of your animals and how to administer shots and stuff. So um, if you don't, don't think that anything I do here is what you should do, because I'm not your vet. Uh, so I just need to give, 
Tina a real quick shot just to sort of get her um, prepared and get her body ready for um, the next season. Sorry, little girl. I'm sorry. We are um, sad that we lost those uh, babies, um, but ultimately um, we got uh, to keep Tina. She is doing a lot, a lot better. She wasn't doing well when that was all going down. And I feel like, whether I'm right or wrong, I think she was a little sad the way everything happened. Um, but we have Jolene. and Can you see Jolene? There she is. We have Jolene and uh, Tina's twin, Peyton, over there who are very close to kidding themselves. We got everybody geared up. Any medicines anybody need, we're ready for that. thing with Tina appeared to be um, sort of a fluke, like her body just wasn't as healthy as it needed to be to have triplets. And so we took care of that. She got her antibiotics, she got all of her stuff. So she's doing way, way better now. And we're happy that she's still with us. But ultimately any day now, we're gonna have some babies. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. And as far as our La Manchas go, um, they don't appear to have taken their, uh, taken any babies on. They don't seem to be pregnant from fall uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put them in with the respective bucks here um, now that it's spring because i don't know if you know this but the seasons are changing folks the seasons are changing and that means that um, we can only breed our la Manchas in spring and fall so we are coming into spring season it is now i guess like the beginning of spring so not only does that mean breeding time but that also means you guys better have these plants ready, y'all. I got leaves blooming on these fruit trees. We got all kinds of uh, stuff growing and we need to start planting even more and so do you. So we need to do a little check on our greenhouse to see how that's going. Just checking in on the bucks. Uh, Roger, doing well. Of course, Miyagi, always doing well. The big daddy on the farm. And Quag is doing great. Uh, hopefully he will be breeding Veruca and Francine very, very soon, because he is now, appears to be pretty close to full grown. Then if you can see down here, our sleepy little boy, Ollie. Ollie, are you sleepy? Okay, I won't bug you. So let us get over here and check on our greenhouse. We got a whole bunch of stuff growing. If you've been following our short videos and long videos, then you've been seeing everything we've been doing out here in the greenhouse. So we need to check and see where we're at. How silly of me. First, we need to check on something else. Kevin, we need to check on something else, buddy. Come on. We need to check on these ladies. Hello, ladies. How's everybody doing? Looks like you need some food and we need to fix your water there. This is our brand new baby chick. So let's get in here and uh, see what we can do. Hello, hello, hello. They haven't messed this up too bad yet. If you guys watched our last video, we showed you um, just how we built this uh, lovely new brooder but as they grow these chicks here man they uh, they grow so fast they eat a ton so you got to make sure that they're all stocked up with some grower starter and then we make sure we sprinkle some grit in here some chick grit make sure they can digest all that stuff and you can certainly put some um, apple cider vinegar in your water um, or some, they have some pre-mixed like electrolyte stuff, but uh, we don't, well, sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't. We have pretty healthy chicks here and I'll show you. Look at these things. Y'all, it has been a while since we've had little chickadees and they are just so sweet. They are growing oh so fast. Look at those girls. All right, Kevin, Kevin, hey, Kevin. Calm down. He's trying to get Steven. Him, him and Steven like to play a lot. That's his uh, best buddy, apparently. Uh, so, yeah, we got to go check the greenhouse. So, I suppose this is another happy part of our update. Uh, we got so much stuff going on in here. Our fig trees are looking great. They're growing nice and strong. And I want to give you guys a warning who are growing. And I don't know where you are at right now. We are in zone 7B. You're in northish georgia outside uh, metro atlanta i want to warn you this is the time of year that is very very tricky uh you want to put all this stuff outside in the garden right now i know i understand i feel you i am there with you 
just wait. I'm telling you, just wait. We had 28 degree night last night and it's supposed to be 80 degrees this week. So I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't kill off all your plants. There's hundreds of plants here. As much as I want to put these into some dirt, I'm not going to. If you want to pot some stuff up, if it's getting too big for your trays, certainly do that. Keep it in your house, in your greenhouse, in your growing area. Don't put it outside yet till you're sure. Let's get those ground temperatures up about 40 degrees consistently before we start putting this stuff in the ground, y'all. Don't, don't do it yet. It's so tempting. I fully understand. Don't do it. Check out this broccoli. So if you've been doing the grow with us little challenge thing, this is our one broccoli plant. I thought about potting it up the other day, but I think we're going to wait. I want to wait till I have a nice solid root, root ball and then we're going to put this in a big pot to show you that you can grow vegetables no matter where you are, apartments, HOAs, big homes, little homes, doesn't matter. You can grow food. So look at those figs. They're looking great. Got cauliflowers and kale and broccoli. Man, these things look great. Look at that, like our big broccoli. Whew. And we're still going along with our Swiss chard, our kohlrabi. Um, our spinach is sort of hanging in there. I don't know, it might not make it. We may just plant that directly in the ground here in a little bit. And then this is our collards. Oh, these things are gonna be so good. They were so good last year. And look at these, sun sugar tomatoes. These are red snapper tomatoes, and then our time bomb peppers, and look at this. Look at our tobacco, you guys. Ugh, so cool. Can't wait. I'm gonna grow the tobacco out, and I'm gonna hang it in our workshop. Strawberries are coming back. They're looking good. Orchard is coming to life, y'all. We're gonna have so many peaches and plums and pears and apples and figs. It's so exciting. Enclosed garden, got our taters in there. Uh, we planted them a little bit later, so, um, we haven't really seen a whole lot yet, plus we got a bunch of rain. Uh, we've been picking asparagus way over there all the time. Mr. Bunny Boy out here enjoying the shade. Hey, buddy. Check on our folks in the chicken tractor. I see we got a couple eggs back there. They're doing just dandy in here. Everybody doing all right? Got our big garden tarp still. We're going to be tilling that, pulling that up, and tilling it very, very soon. Kevin is leading me somewhere, not where I want to go. We have some tarps on our plots out here. These are going to be um pulled up and tilled very soon as well so we are doing great with our gardens let's go check on our berries real quick kevin is just he's got a uh, one track mind today apparently berries we got our elderberries growing raspberries blackberries everything is looking phenomenal knockout roses are coming back everything is looking fantastic so like i said sometimes stuff is really really good like Kevin, our big boy, growing here with us. And uh, boy, I love this guy so much. Um, and then some things aren't always that great. And that's um, Tina losing her babies. And so it's just stuff to remember as you raise animals and grow food. You're gonna have good years, you're gonna have bad years. Sometimes you're gonna have a good year with a couple of bad spots. Sometimes you're gonna have a bad year with a couple of good spots. It's always good to remember. And so right now, if you look on your screen, I'm gonna put some playlists and some videos that you can check out and you can keep watching all the farm fun with me. Isn't that right, Kevin? Thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. Say bye, Kevin. Say bye. Bye, guys.